Hello, my name is Corey, and I'm one of the developers of SDSX. SDSX is a drum app that makes it fun and easy to program beats. And in this video, we will go over the main part of what programming drum beats is, and that is the sequencer. Basically, a sequencer is something that tells an instrument what to play and when to play it. Our sequencer is 16 steps long, with step 1 being at the top left and step 16 being on the bottom right. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just press play so you can kind of see what a sequence is. And here that the drums are playing and it's based off of the information that was input into those little nodes there. And as you can tell, we're going through a few different patterns here, so you don't have to just program a simple little repeating thing, but it can be programmed up into a song even. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and press stop, and we'll learn how to program a beat. First off, just kind of a really top-level overview. I went over these are each of the nodes, so that's, those are called steps in the sequencer. So we have 1 through 16, and then on the right here we have some... Um, function buttons. The first one selects different patterns, the second one copies patterns, the third one with the X here will clear patterns, and the last one will set the sequencer length. To get started I'm going to clear out all of the patterns here so you can just tap on each one that you want to clear and then I'm going to select pattern one so we'll get started there. Now there's a couple different ways to program information into the sequencer. One of the easiest ways to do it is to press this record button and you'll see it's a bar across the top that shows you that you are in record mode and then we can turn on the metronome so we will hear an audible click when we press play and now we can just tap in a beat with the click. Two, three, four. Great, so we have a little bit of a beat going on there, and I'm going to turn the click off and unrecord. So now we can show you the other way of how to program a beat. So uh, I actually meant to play that second snare or that first snare hit on a different beat, so I'll show you how to change that. Um, on the sequencer, there's this tap to program button. You're going to go ahead and press tap to program, and then it says select pad or step. So the snare is the one that I want to change. So I'm going to tap on the snare to show you guys. And you can see these two highlighted nodes, and that's when the snare is playing. And I actually meant for this snare to be on B2. So I'm going to select it, and that will delete that second snare hit. And I will put the snare where I wanted it. Nice. So you might notice that this snare is brighter than that one, and that also means that it's louder. So if I wanted to change the volume of that snare to be as loud as the first one, I could just click it and then click it again. And now they're the same volume. Another way to go in and edit that information is to go back into tap to program mode and then select the step that you want. So if we wanted this kick right here to be louder, Whoops, I deleted it. So we can click on that step and then tap it and it'll put up to 127. But what you can do is you touch the number and then drag up and down. That'll change the volume of the kick. So we've got a bit of a beat going on here. Let's maybe add some hi-hats and we can do that again a couple different ways. First off, let's maybe play in some hi-hats. And then I kind of missed that first one again, so let's edit it. And I'll tap this, and we want those to be all on the eighth notes. And then maybe actually a little bit quieter so they match the other volume. And then let's say we wanted maybe an offbeat hi-hat with the open hi-hat towards the end here. So we're going to program another one in on this last step. So now we have a little bit of a beat with some hi-hats going on. And we've made our first pattern. So I'm going to unrecord and I'm going to stop for a second here to kind of explain what patterns are. So we have our first pattern that we just made here. And that is one of the 16 patterns that I can make in this kit. So we could just go and select another pattern and start playing another beat if we wanted to have one in this kit. 
But in my case, what I actually want to do is I want to copy pattern one over to pattern two. So we are now again selected on pattern one, and then we are going to hold the copy button and then copy it to the pattern that we want. And now that has a little bit of a light gray around it. So it has our pattern. So now if I use the pattern select button, the top one, and then press number two, and you can see that information is in there. And if I press play, we have our same beat going on. And um, a lot of times with programming drums, what you'll do is kind of alternate between a couple different patterns. Maybe the hi-hats and the snares will stay the same and the kick will change. So let's go ahead and change the kick. I'll go in in program mode and then tap on the kick and we'll see what our pattern is. And let's say instead of these two on the second time, we kind of want to just repeat it and then do one down there as well. So our pattern two now sounds like this. So the kick patterns change a little bit and then let's make it even a little bit more different and put a clap on here too. So we can hear that difference. Let's maybe put the clap at a little bit lower volume and let's put it where we put that last little kick right there. So they're on the same beat. I'm gonna press play again. So you can hear that clap right there. Clap. Awesome. So now we have two different patterns. Let's go through chaining patterns together because you might not want just one to loop over and over again. You might want to go back and forth between two. So to do that, we will use the pattern select button and let's just alternate between one and two. So I'll select one and then while I'm still holding down on pattern select, I'll press two and then let's play and watch that alternate back and forth between two. So you can hear the clap on the second one, not on the first one. Nice. So let's maybe go on and say we didn't like what we did on that pattern and wanted to delete it. Like I showed you before earlier, you can select this delete button and then on two, and now there's actually nothing on two when we're selected here. We go back to one and we alternate between one and two, it'll be empty on the second time through. Empty. Sweet. So let's, again, maybe let's copy pattern one, select pattern one, copy it over to pattern two. So we have something there. And then let's select pattern two and I'll show you um, step multipliers. So normally when you play through the sequencer, each one of these steps plays the drum one time, but what a step multiplier does is it plays it multiple times on a single step. And a lot of the times that'll be utilized within hi-hats. So on two, we will add the step multiplier onto some hi-hats. So we'll go into program mode, hit our closed hi-hats, and let's just make it busy with all of these. And then you can either one time, which is the default, two times. So let's put a two times here, a three times here, and then a four times here so we can hear that as it plays through. So you can hear fitting more and more closed hi-hats within to that section. Nice, and that can be done on anything, not just a hi-hat, any of the pads that you might wanna put a, a multiplier on, like these toms here, if we wanted to do a kind of crazy tom fill, we could program in some multiple toms towards the end. So we got just a crazy, Tom playing drummer going on there. And then maybe if we chain these together again, you can chain one, two, three, one. So I did pattern one three times in a row, and then it'll do pattern two one time. So here's the first time through, second time, third time, and here's our fill. And it'll go back to the beginning. So you can chain patterns up to, I think, 128 times. Um, so you can get a pretty elaborate chain going on with the 16 different patterns. Last thing that I want to go over with the sequencer is the sequencer length. Our sequencer is in 16 steps, which is in uh, div is divisible by four. So a lot of your patterns with 16 steps are going to sound very straightforward in a four pattern, like the ones that we just made. But you can adjust the length of the pattern to be something that is not divisible by four or is kind of an odd meter. 
Um, but let's set the length to 12, and that will give us something that's kind of a feel in 3. I'm going to select just pattern 1, so we're on this more simple pattern here, and set the length by holding the length button, and I'm not selected on any pads, I'm just looking at the global view, and I'm going to press 12. So our entire pattern 1 is set to 12 lengths. So let's hear what our original pattern here sound, sounds like just going through with 12 steps. So you can kind of hear, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So that's one way to adjust um, and get kind of out of the rut of being in maybe four, four, if you wanted to try to change something up. And if you want to change something up even more, you can actually set the length of the sequencer per pad, which can get a little bit out of hand and might lose track of it, but uh, I like to have a lot of fun with this and maybe set up something that plays against something else. So let's do that, maybe put this whole thing back into 16 so we have a normal thing. And then let's maybe make a tom pattern that is in uh, 12 steps. Well, we'll make the, let's make the, high tom, we'll go back to single multiplier, and we will make the high tom in 12 steps, and we'll do something like this, and then we'll do the low tom, and let's do the low tom in like 14 steps, and the low tom can do the same pattern, but then it will be offset when it repeats. So let's play and hear what that sounds like. Nice, so you can hear those toms don't always sound the same, and this is just a single pattern. We're not even chaining patterns together, but because these are of different step lengths, we can get varying patterns um, that will line up over time, but will kind of um, cycle through and uh, yield some pretty interesting results. Sweet, so that's an overview of the sequencer, and I hope that this video is helpful. Uh, I'm just gonna play us out with some music. We'll put this in record enable and let that roll through and still record some parts into it.